Well, hey guys, welcome back to Cairn Creek. I'm Jeremy here in Southern Ohio. So on this episode, it's story time. We don't do that very often. I'm gonna show you in this little patch of woods what went down, why it's so crazy, and does it happen to you? In today's saga, we are going to visit my best friend's farm and tell a story of thievery. The 3,000 acre Jones family farm is snug against the side of River Valley in the foothills of Appalachia right here in Chilcothy, Ohio, the first capital of the Buckeye State. Rod and I have been best friends since childhood. We've got into all kinds of shenanigans together, and we still continue to hang out all the time over at Cairn Creek. Now, in order to convey this story correctly, we need to go back to January 19, 2021. At 4.30 on a cold, dark morning, one of the deer cameras, you know the one that sends pictures to your phone, captured somebody cutting down some trees without permission. Now, hang with us, the story gets better. My buddy Rod quickly went over closer to daylight and found that the perp had already fled the scene. Now at this time, the thief didn't know he'd been caught on camera. Through some social media investigations, Rod got a good lead on the identity of this guy. Illegal lumberjacks in Cass County. Thieves are going onto your property and cutting down walnut trees, hoping to cash in. Jackson County is charging a man with stealing walnut trees from a park. Yes, you heard that right. There are lumberjack villains out there. Are times so tough that an individual would take such an extreme risk to make a buck? We've all heard the stories of big logging companies encroaching on property lines, but this individual went solo. And this actually wasn't the first time it happened at my buddy's farm. More on the walnut thief later. For now, we're going to load up, we're going to head over to the farm, and we're going to retrieve the extra pieces that old boy would probably planned on getting later until he got caught. This particular part of the farm is pretty remote and it's locked down pretty good. I'm surprised he's able to gain access into this part. So me and my buddy Cruz, we're gonna have some fun and go retrieve these logs. The river bottoms, as we like to call them, provide a nice, rich, fertile soil for crops to really excel in growth. It also gives an opportunity for the trees and stuff along the side to also flourish and grow well. Unfortunately, there is an actual term to describe these thieves. They are called walnut rustlers. It's actually a pretty big thing. Down the Amazon forest, it's a huge thing where they actually bring in helicopters and drop down and cut the trees and remove them from the forest. It's a highly valuable operation. Although this took place when the leaves were not fully out here in Southern Ohio, this is the route that the guy backed his trailer into. Truck and trailer, pitch dark, made it winding back through here, and I've got some video here of the actual day that it happened. And trust me, folks, I really, really want to villainize this guy, and he should be. However, it was quite the operation that he took. It, it took some skill for him to get back in here to this tree, scope it out, back his truck and trailer up through all these other trees, and actually get this dangerous task done in the dark. Like I said, I hate to de-villainize this guy, but it's pretty impressive now in this particular location on the farm this tree being removed would have went unnoticed for golly who knows how long unfortunately for the guy that cut it down though there was right in front of a trail camera talk about bad karma folks let's go back to that cold january day farmer rod contacted the local sheriff's department and submitted his findings they made a visit to the suspect's house where they find the exact truck from the trail cam pictures hooked up to a trailer with a black walnut log. At this point, they confiscated the coveted specimen and had it impounded. What makes black walnut desirable, you might ask? In our parts, it boils down to the beauty our climate conditions allows the trees to develop. Local sawmills will pay top dollar to sellers on black walnut. And I think it's fair to say this log fetched over $500. Not bad for a night's worth of work. So here we are guys, at literally the scene of the crime. This is where the stump was cut. That camera was right over there on that tree, that deer camera that caught him. And we are literally 120 yards from a major highway. So you can probably hear that traffic noise, which was probably an advantage for old boy. I'm sure that helped mask his chainsaw noise. And then being in the middle of the night too, nobody would have heard it. The perfect crime was committed right chop. So the next task is pretty simple. We just gotta get these walnut logs out to the trailer, get them over to the Woodmiser Saw Milk, Cairn Creek. Come on. Cruz, you want you to go pick one up for me? You carry the small one, I'll carry the big one. Try it go. Which one is small? 
You can pick up either one you want, bud. I mean, you're the one that got to talk to Travis Pastrana today. You should have big muscles. Hey, Cruz. Man, wish you were here. Sorry I missed you, but uh, I'm sure I will see you sometime before this rally's over. You are the man. This shirt is awesome. Thank you so much. I'll look you guys up. Good luck. Keep having fun. And if I had to guess, if old boy didn't get caught here at this crime scene, he was going to come back for this one. This is a nice butt log, pretty decent size. Over here, another nice walnut, several walnuts here. Most of them are smaller. This guy really done his homework. There was some actual pictures on that trail camera that showed, I think three or four days prior, there were some folks here walking. So they probably came during the daytime, scouted out this whole forest area, picked out the honey hole, and then completed their mission in the dark. Guys, back to Sawmill, we shall go. I've been friends with my buddy Rod since we were wee wee little. Uh, like I said, best friends forever. So here we are, taking Rod's sloppy seconds. Uh huh. All right, I'm gonna shut up here for a minute. Just sit back, enjoy the show. Let's crank up some music. Watch the Woodmiser in action. After the impounded log sat for a few weeks, ODNR, High Division Natural Resources, was brought in to analyze the log to confirm it matched the stump. In their official report, they stated that the log did not match. They said the stump size was different than the jailed walnut specimen. Now, I don't want to get into my opinion too much on this, but it all didn't add up to me. Old boy either cut a different log later that morning I guess he could have cut some cookies, some thin slices from it. I'd say he was good enough. He knew how to trick the system. Now we've got this short four foot log, the fatter of the two. Probably just slab it up for some live bed stuff. It might make some cool little end table tops or something eventually. But believe it or not, the shorter log, they're a pain in the butt to cut because these clamps right here, my hot dog clamps do not reach. We've got these manual clamps. Oh no, not a big deal. It's just a pain in the butt to cut shorter logs. So we're gonna slab this little piece up for some live edge stuff, guys. It's gonna look good. Alright, so the LT35 Wood Miser munched that walnut up. Good job, Mr. Wood Miser. So if you guys have watched this long, I think you enjoyed what you saw. We normally don't do these story time videos like this, but this was a good story to tell, and I'm glad we were able to tell it. And bonus says, we've got two good things to come out of this. One, we've got some good footage for today's video. We've got these beautiful walnut pieces that we're gonna use for this fact. Rod's mom, Miss Kay, asked me the other day if I could make her a butcher's block. She wants it for looks, it's just for looks. So this created a good opportunity to go to their farm and take a bad situation and hopefully turn it into something good. Maybe if I have enough, I can make two of those butcher blocks, we'll see. But that'll be cool to say, this came from the farm. Remember that time, it's just a story that every time somebody asks about that butcher's block, there's gonna be more than a story of a butcher's block. It's gonna be a story about thievery, heathenry, shenanigans. And what I like to say, if, the, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to Cairn Creek, we've got a great community here. We do a lot more than this. We do a lot of stuff on our homestead, our future homestead, excuse me. Uh, we've got horses, tracos, skid loaders, bulldozers, tractors, foilers, side by sides. We're blessed to have a lot of things to do here to create content. And my main focus is usually just getting content of stuff I'm doing. I usually don't just do a video to create a video. It's not going to be on something I'm doing 
to make progress into our future goals. So if you're new to the channel, if you're new to this, this is your first video, what I'd like for you to do is don't subscribe yet. Go back, watch some of our other videos here from recent times. Make sure you fit in our community. Make sure you like what we're doing. The last thing I want you to do is waste your time subscribing to us and then you don't like what you see. So check out some other ones. If you do like what you see, always hit the thumbs up and give us a sub. We appreciate you. Cairn Creek guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for working with us. Cairn Creek, over and out. I guess those closest to the situation, if it's any consolation, the old boy did get busted a few weeks later and he's back in prison. This will be the third time he's been to prison for stealing walnut logs. <laughs>